Hello and welcome to the Stay Healthy Experience. I am Robert Ferguson. And before we get this show started, I want you to like, I want you to comment, I want you to subscribe. I want you to help us get the word out and share. Now on this show, Barbara and I are going to be talking about calories, what you want to know about calories. We're going to touch on labels, what you want to know about labels when it comes to you getting exactly what you're hoping to get. We're going to also talk about the number one killer in North America, if not the world. So Barbara's done some research. She's going to bring us up to date. That's going to be great. I can't wait to jump right into it. And then there's a couple other things we're going to talk about to include the three most Googled weight loss programs for 2021. So let's get this party started. Okay, Barbara. <laughs> Excited as always, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Wait, you're taking off your jacket. I'm you're taking ready? off my jacket. God yes. dang. <laughs> because we're going to talk about some things that um, I know people would like to know. Yes. Um, so, but before we get into all of that mm-hmm. and we talk about some of your research and yeah. where you are with, with what you've discovered, mm-hmm. um, I want to kind of bring up calories. Okay. Calories. Calories. So, most people and most doctors, mm-hmm. uh, most medical professionals, right? when they talk about weight loss, somewhere in that discussion, they're going to talk about calories in and calories out. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Right? Mm-hmm. So, and again, I'm speaking with you because we know a lot of the same things, right. but you're always representing the people, right? So you yeah. ask questions to help bring clarity so that whatever I bring up, the same as what you bring up. Mm-hmm we can then kind of help people get more out of their time spent with us. Right. They can understand. Yes. Yes. So calories, Mm -hmm. and for those who are listening in on this, I want you to thoroughly get this. Right. Is a, we're going to call it energy because that's what it is. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. And when you hear people talk about calories in, calories out, Mm -hmm. the, the thought is that if you eat less, so if you bring in fewer calories right, mm-hmm. and you move more because in movement you burn more calories, mm-hmm. that's how you lose weight. Yes. Now, I know a lot about the history of how calories became calories the way we see it today. Uh-huh. Um, and I want to talk about that because in that it will help people realize that weight loss is not primarily based on calories in mm-hmm. and calories out. And if it's not based on calories in, calories out. What is it based on? Exactly. I was going to say, well, then, yeah. Right. Let's share. Now, have you ever seen what they call a bomb calorie meter? A bomb calorie? I have not. Okay. So a bomb calorie meter uh-huh. is a function. It's a way where they take water, oxygen, heat, and mm. they put it in this chamber, a mm. bomb, if you will. Yeah. And they can, they look at how fast it burns or what is necessary for it to burn mm-hmm. as the heat is... Um, Increased, right? And once it hits that one degree Celsius, then you start to see this this meltdown. Okay, and that's how they're able to say that if you eat this many chips, it has these this many calories. Got it. If you eat that burger, then it has this many calories. Yes, makes sense. Right, and so so it's that function that helps people understand like how many calories are in certain foods. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And so then you know along the way, everyone started focusing on calories, and there was a woman. Uh, Dr. Lulu Peters, mm-hmm. she came out of a book in the early 1900s. She was a physician. There weren't many women physicians, Barbara, at the time. Yeah, that's too bad. And she wanted to lose some weight. Mm-hmm. And so college was still fairly new. There was some progress taking place uh, as a result of this guy named um, um, Atwater, Wilbur Atwater. Atwater, okay. So this isn't a history lesson, but I know. they come to mind. It helps me stay on track. Right. And so as people were becoming more and more uh, knowledgeable of calories, Mm -hmm. and not most people, she decided to write a book because she liked the idea of when you look at foods, you look at the food not for the food, but how many calories are with it. So she created an association. So she would, Mm -hmm. instead of saying, I'm going to have a slice of cake, she would say, I'm going to have a slice of 200 calorie cake. So she was thinking more like energy. Right. Right. And yeah. so she kind of went with that, mm-hmm. and I don't want 500-calorie cake. I'm going to eat the 200-calorie cake. And as a result, she ended up losing a significant amount of weight. Oh, how interesting. And it was one of the first um, books, diet-related books, that became extremely popular. Ah. Oh. I mean, it killed it. 
uh, based on today's standards. Mm -hmm. So all of that being said, you now have more and more people like becoming knowledgeable of calories. And Mm -hmm. we still don't have calories on all the food, but we have an idea. Right. You know, like I don't know if you ever like looked at calories growing up. But before we had the Internet, before we had these apps, Mm -hmm. I remember buying these books and having books in my car and books in my office where Mm -hmm. I could open it up, look at the index, look at uh, a donut and it would tell me how many calories oh, okay. and mm-hmm. what the breakdown of those calories were, which would be protein, fats, carbohydrates, et cetera. Right, the macros. Mm-hmm. Now and you can just pick up your phone and boom. You I know. It's so easy now. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> here's the point. So I had to say all of that to get to the place right. um, about calories, how I want people to start li- to look at calories. Mm-hmm. Wood, if you were to eat it, has calories. Right. <laughs> There's yeah. energy in wood. Yeah. If I were to eat cut your hair and eat it there's energy in your hair that and then you'd be magical too i would be magical yeah that's right i'm thinking <laughs> of some 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 uh, characters some <laughs> disney characters uh there's energy in a donut there's energy in meat. right there's energy in strawberries mm-hmm. right so there's energy in these foods right based on the bomb calorie meter okay not based on our body because our bodies aren't a bomb calorie meter so that's the first disconnect uh, yes Ah, I, know, I like where this is going. Our bodies are unique. They're unique. Right. And we don't, there's still a lot we don't understand. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but we've looked at calories in, calories out based on what takes place inside of this bomb calorie meter. Yes. Well, there's another thing that people aren't thinking about mm-hmm. because if calories in, calories out was the sole premise for how we lose weight, mm-hmm. why is it that certain people who all eat the same amount of calories aren't able to lose weight? Exactly. Yep. Because it's not just about the energy in the food that we're consuming mm-hmm. or the movement as far as the energy. Right. It's the impact of the calories that we consume mm-hmm. on the hormones that are triggered. Right. Right. Because mm-hmm. if I eat a white potato, mm-hmm. if I eat white rice, brown rice, carbohydrate rich foods. Right. It's going to trigger the release of insulin. Mm hmm. And insulin is a storage hormone, which right. isn't good or bad. It just is what it is. Right. But it's mostly looked at as the primary hormone for why we gain weight. Yes. So if I ate protein, something that's rich in protein, yeah. chicken, fish, mm-hmm. shrimp, tofu, mm-hmm. insulin is still stimulated mm-hmm. right, and triggered, but not to the extent if it's primarily carbs. Got it. Yes. And then there's other hormones, right? Because if I'm having a stressful day and yes. I'm eating that donut, <laughs> there's a hormone called cortisol. Yes. That's like the belly fat hormone. Right. And a lot of people hear about that. And they hear a lot about that. Yes. Uh-huh. And that's another hormone that's triggered not just by the foods we eat, but, yes. but a lot of how life it's is life unfolding. Been, yes. Well, then there's another hormone called acylation stimulating protein, ASP. And if you didn't eat carbs Mm -hmm. and if you didn't eat protein rich foods Mm -hmm. and let's say you ate something that's primarily fat, well, insulin is probably not being secreted. Okay. Um, There's other hormones that we could talk about, um, but they're not being secreted. And insulin is the one that we're thinking about. Right. But acylation stimulating protein is, and that's a protein that then will trigger insulin to get in the game. Okay. So fat can trigger insulin through a chain of events that okay. can then cause you to gain body fat. Ah. Yes, me? yes. So if we just look at that, if we just look at what I just said, mm-hmm. and we know that 100 calories of broccoli totally is experienced in our body different yes. than 100 calories of jelly beans. Yeah, or donuts or something. Or 100 like. calories of donuts. Right. Or 100 calories of strawberries. Yes. Then it can't be about calories in and calories out. Absolutely. And this is where the magic of the diet for life method comes from Mm -hmm. or a big part of it is because we know that it's not specifically what we've just talked about. Mm -hmm. It has more to do with how your hormones respond Mm -hmm. to the foods that you consume. Right. Absolutely. So I could stop there. That's really good. But I just wanted to lay the the premise down so that we can do a follow-up show and really go Mm -hmm. into the science of calories in calories out Mm -hmm. and get people away from that way of thinking Mm -hmm. yes absolutely and i think that a lot of people 
they like this information, and which is good. It's helpful that they hear this, right? But at the end of the day, it's that solution that if we're going to carry this on, this conversation on further, they want to hear that solution about, okay, so how do I, how do I make sure that the quality of the calories that I'm eating impacts me in a way that's optimal, right? Yes, and I would say no. Yeah. Because people are not the brightest, smartest in the world when it comes to nutrition. Mm. And it's not their fault, and it's not me being pompous, or I think I'm, I know all that, <laughs> because I don't. And I'm constantly looking to learn and understand. Yeah. But what I do know is that people will hear us a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some people will tune out. Some people will listen to the end. And a lot <laughs> of the people who listen to the entire conversation aren't going to change anything that they do. Uh, that's true. They're just going to yes. keep doing what they're doing. And, and next thing you know, they're following one of these three most popular diets being Googled. Yes. Having no idea <laughs> on the negative impact of these diets mm -hmm. in their long-term health. Yeah, I'm excited to hear what they are. I have an idea of what they are, but I'd really like to see what the most current data shows as far as the most Googled diets out okay. there. Okay. Well, before we go there, I asked you, I sent you a couple of uh, labels. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm going to segue from... Talking about calories. Yes. Stressing the importance of nutrition knowledge. Yep. And now let's talk about labels. Okay. Wrap it all together and then we'll go into those three. All right. Three. So I'm going to pull up okay? the label. All right. So let's pull up the Please. label. So I asked Barbara. So there's two of them. Yes. Yeah, so you have one uh -huh. that says ground turkey and it says 93% lean, <clears throat> yeah. 7% fat. And I want you to not be Barbara. I want you to be one of your clients. I want you to put, make yourself like the average person. Okay. Um, when you look at this product, mm -hmm. the, okay. would you say this is like pretty lean? Yeah. Okay. Now let's look at the other product, this ground turkey breast. And it says 99% lean. Right. And 1% fat. Yes. Fresh, all natural. Yes. Okay. All natural, So baby. which one... You know, being a client, <laughs> the average person, would you say is leaner? This one is 99% lean, 1% mm -hmm. fat. The other one is 99 or 93% lean, 7% fat. Which one is uh, least in fat? Oh, I would say I would. they would go towards the 99% lean. So you go because 99 is higher than 93. Right. Right? Okay. Now, when you look at a label, mm -hmm. It's important to know that labels, what you see on the package of a label, mm -hmm. is based on the weight of what's inside of the product. Ah, yes. It's not based on the calories. Got it. Okay, now this yes. is going to get really Ooh. interesting. Okay. Okay, it's based on the weight, and that's why you'll see it in grams. So go to the, the ground turkey yeah. breast, and then let's go to the label. Okay. The label says 120 calories. Per serving. Per yep. serving, right? Mm -hmm. Now look at the total fat. 1.5 grams. Of total fat. Of total fat. Right. And then look at the percentage of the daily value, 2%. Right. Now we're not going to focus on that. We mm -hmm. see this 1.5. Yeah. Now, a person who bought this has absolutely no idea what the percentage of fat is and what they're going to eat. Right. And the way you get that is that you take the total amount of fat. 1. Okay, 5. so 1.5. Okay, you want to get your calculator out? Here. You're going to read it off? Yeah. <laughs> I'll read it off. So Say you one, oh, Hold on. You take the total amount of fat, 1.5. Okay. And there's nine calories in the gram. Right. So times nine. Nine of the fat, yep. And that gives us what? 13 and a half. So 13 and a half. Then you 13 and a half divided by 120 calories in that serving. Okay. So and that's the percentage of fat. So 0.1125. So it's 11% fat. Yeah. Ooh. So in this product that says 1% fat, mm -hmm. in reality, it's 11% fat. Now, anything under, say, 20% fat right, uh, or even 30% fat, I would say Is I it? wouldn't be too concerned with Okay. as far as the fat. Right. Okay? Now it gets fun. So now let's go to the ground turkey. There's 93% lean. Okay, let me go back to my calculator. Hold on. 7% fat. Okay. okay so, so now I'm going to break down how that works. So when you look at the total fat, there's eight, eight. grams of fat. Yep. So eight times nine. Oops. Okay. And then what does that give 72. us? 72. 72. Yes. And we're going to divide that by 170. So divide okay. by 170 Oops. to get the percentage of fat. Hold on. So eight times nine divided by 170. 
42.42. So 42% fat. Yeah. So this product, Whoa. ground turkey breast, is almost 50% pure fat. Whoa. And a person is buying it, right, because it says 93% lean, 7% fat, but in reality it has 42% fat when you eat that serving. What did we do it backwards? Uh, so let's, you want to do this again? Yeah. Okay, so if you have ground turkey. Yeah, the, yep. Right? Let's make sure. So the ground turkey is going to have eight grams eight. of fat. Right. Times nine. Times nine. Divided by 170. Gives you 0. 0.42, 42, yeah. which is 42% fat. Right. So was there a disbelief there? No, it was because you are looking at the 93% lean versus the 99. So the 99 is less, right? Uh, the 99 is less between the two. Yes. Okay. But nowhere does it did it say on the on the breast that it was 11 percent. Exactly. Yeah. It no, said one percent. Yes. That's and a, nowhere does it say 43 <laughs> percent or 42 percent fat in the ground turkey. Right. Nowhere. Nowhere. That's like nowhere. So, yeah, so, no so, one would know how to do that and really figure that out. Right. So, so you got people. Who in their mind, they're going, I'm eating healthy, I'm eating lean. Yeah. A tip is if you ever, if you want to eat lean when it comes to fat, mm -hmm. always choose what says like turkey breast, keyword, okay. um, uh, chicken breast. Right. If you see that on there, you don't have to really think about it much. It's going to be lower in fat yeah. calories in that serving. Right. So that and, part of the bird. Correct. Yeah. So I'm going to read this, you know, so people have clarity. Yes. And then we can talk about it a little bit more, but... When they define, uh, when the government came out in 1990 with mm -hmm. the Nutrition and Educational Act of 1990, that's when labels um, had more, there was more responsibilities that right. were framing the labels. Mm -hmm. So when you and I were kids and we got a Snickers bar or we bought whatever, yes, they didn't have the nutritional facts. Mm -hmm. All this is fairly new. So the people who are totally missing this kind of information mm -hmm is my mom, your mom, dad. Yeah. Because that wasn't part of their upbringing. No, they didn't even worry about that. And then people didn't really pay a lot of attention to mm -hmm. the details, right? So knowing that it's based on weight, it makes you go, well, why don't more people know this? Why wouldn't they just put on the label 42% fat? Right. Just make it simple. They don't want you to know that <laughs> because you wouldn't buy that. Yeah. And so you have lobbyists who lobby mm -hmm. on behalf of, you know, the, the, the meat industry, the, yeah. the dairy industry, et cetera, to make it to where they can manipulate us into thinking one thing. Right. And it's something totally different. They have no idea. Right. So when you when you go shopping, mm -hmm. the average person will see on the pack, it'll say lean meat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'll say extra lean. Mm hmm. And people will buy the extra lean, but when you do these numbers again, it's, it may still be 30, 40, 50% fat. Right. Because also, and then the labeling of using that word, like lean or extra lean, what is that criteria? Most people don't know what that means. Right, so I'm gonna read that criteria. So lean, uh -huh. by government definition, means that 100 grams of beef, which again is based on weight, Okay. that's about three and a half ounces, have less than 10 grams of fat, 4.5 grams of less of saturated fat. So it's basically, if it doesn't have more than 10 grams of fat, they can call it lean. Okay. If it's like less than five grams, the grams they can say it's extra lean. Oh, okay. So when you look huh. at the tur turkey breast, even though it was lower in fat, they didn't have extra lean. They didn't have lean. They just had turkey breast. Oh, Right, so it just said like whatever the percentage well, actually, was. Sorry, that was that, that was not right. Let me let me go back. Let me pull it up. So like okay. ninety nine yeah. percent. It says lean. lean. So the word lean, it is on there. Yeah, it's ninety nine percent lean. Even though there's eleven percent fat, mm -hmm. that's not based on weight. That's that's the calories. Such so as how they how they defined it. Right, it's based on weight. Oh, so it's so tricky. It's a lie. Yeah, and I was doing a Facebook post earlier, and I was talking about one of the biggest challenges that we have around nutrition, mm -hmm. these labels and what we just talked about is that, I mean, let me paraphrase with the Bible. Our people perish for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your health is subdued. It's the quality of your life is hindered 
because you don't know what you and I know, yeah. right? Because I'm not, I'm not taking advantage of because I know how to read a label. Right. You know how to read a label. Mm -hmm. Our clients who become members learn how to read a label. Yes, they become savvy there with yes. labels. Yeah. And sometimes this is why I, I'm gonna use the word pit. I get pissed off. <laughs> and and this happened this morning because someone called me who I've known for a while. Mm -hmm. Literally, they bought one of my weight loss programs years ago. Uh -huh. uh, they watch me on Facebook. They watch you on Facebook. They are part of our Facebook uh, group as far as the people who are diet free lifers. Mm -hmm. And they call me today and they say, hey, I made a mistake. And I go, you made a mistake doing what? Mm -hmm. Well, I just got to get on your program. I said, OK, well, that'd be <laughs> great. I go like, what's what's going on? Where's the mistake? Yeah. Well, I was watching this program on TV. Next thing you know, I was on a computer. I spent like eighty three dollars uh -huh. and I bought this keto program <laughs> and I almost wanted to hang up. Right. Yeah. Like, what's up with that? I almost hung up. on. Yeah. Him. Seriously. Yeah. Because that's absolutely me? that's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. It. I mean, it is. Yeah. And the same thing will happen to you. You will have more and more people that see what you do as a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. They realize it's different than anything they've ever done. Yes. And they're going to be doing some crazy stuff. And, and all they had to do is pick up the phone, yep. call you, text you, email you. Yes. And they could know what you know. Yeah. It's that easy. So but I was bothered by this person calling yeah. me and <laughs> sharing that with me because... <clears throat> You know, there's a part of me that wants to take it as a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also realize that ignorance is bliss for many people. Mm -hmm. And I realize that, you know, it's not their fault. They don't right. know. They don't know. I just I, I got to figure out a way. So when I hung up the phone <laughs> right before I hung up, I said, you know uh -huh. what? I'm going to call you in a couple of days and I'm going to get you started. And I'm going to hold your hand so that 20 more years don't go by. Mm. without you um, knowing the truth. Right. And so before we hung up, this person goes, so what do you mean like increase <laughs> mortality by doing keto? And I said, uh, yeah. the data is there. There's been many uh, meta analysis, mm -hmm. many studies, big groups, small groups. Mm -hmm. And it is proven without question that people who embrace a keto lifestyle mm -hmm. yep. increase their mortality. I know it's over 20%. Yeah. I share that with my clients as well. And so, and I believe through my own personal observation mm -hmm. with clients and people is that when you, if you're a woman over the age of 40 mm -hmm. and you are not in very good fit shape, so let's say your body fat's over 20%, mm -hmm. which is not bad. It's just, right. you're not like Miss Fitness. Mm -hmm. You, that's who they're talking about. Is those women, 40, 50, 60, 65, 70, that are doing keto, mm -hmm. and they're losing so much lean muscle tissue. Yes. And mm -hmm. that's playing a big role in a big waste of bone density. Mm -hmm. So many things are just fading. Right. That the likelihood of getting that back is almost, it's almost impossible. Yeah. And they have no idea. None. They're just so fixated on the weight loss or potential for weight loss. They didn't even know to ask what kind of weight, right? And understanding what kind of weight they're losing. I hear it so often. In fact, I have, well, two, two clients literally this week. One of them hardcore was hardcore keto and extremely frustrated, had no really idea about understanding body composition and really trying to maintain lean mass and all that. And so I feel fortunate that I'm in that place to be able to share that information with her and with as many people as I can. But when I see how much that she just wasn't aware of and was doing keto for so long, it was so unfortunate. So and, unfortunate. And, and guess what? One of the three most Googled weight <laughs> loss programs are for Boom. 2021. Yeah. Keto is like right there. Yeah, I believe it. It's, it's number one. Um, and then with that, and I'm not going to put them in any order. Okay. Um, the most Googled ones that people are doing, paleo is still up there. Okay. Uh, and then intermittent fasting. fasting. Oh, yeah. I that's believe that's great. number two. Paleo, I believe, is number three. Okay. And keto is number one. Yeah, I figured it would be keto or some kind of low-carb, you know, variety. <laughs> and and who do they? I mean, look, if you go online and you start Googling, mm -hmm. you'll see some fit people talking about keto, intermittent fasting, yeah. and paleo. Mm -hmm. Again, 
I'm not looking to help someone who's already fit get the weight off and have a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's that's not who we're. I'm not. We're, we're not trying to influence or, or, or work with those people. Right. We're looking for people who the majority of the world. Yeah. That don't look like that. Yes. And we don't know what that person is doing at home. Mm-hmm. You know, I have no idea. No. You know, I mean, it's pretty obvious that they're probably hitting the weights hard mm-hmm. and they may be even using some type of substance to help them look. Yes. As lean as they look. For sure. And maintain that kind of mass. Right. Um, but we don't know what they're doing. Right. And their lifestyle can, you know, is, is a lot more adaptable, I would imagine. Let's see if they are, if that's what they're doing. Maybe that's their job is to look that way, right? Versus the, the average person. They don't have that amount of time to, you know, to put into completely changing their lifestyle or working out as much right. as they do. That's just not part of their, of their, of their lifestyle. And so something like that, like a low car or a keto type diet. They can't do that for a very long well, time. Well, most and most people can't do keto. Yeah, and that's why I want to do a show and just show people like what is what scientific keto looks like. Yes, and mm-hmm. you can do one meal. Mm-hmm. So imagine if you do three meals a day. That's twenty one meals at the end of the week. Right. In a month, what mm-hmm. is that? Eighty four meals. I mean, yeah, that's a lot yes, of meals. Yes, I'm like I, I can multiply. Right. So <laughs> yes, eighty four meals. And you will see that it's very difficult mm-hmm. to have a scientific keto plate. Yeah. Very difficult. And the people who think that, that they're doing keto, they're not doing keto. Right. They're doing low carb. Yes. And then low carb is associated with a lot of these negatives. So, right. mm-hmm. um, again, my goal is not, not to beat up these diets. Yeah. Because I understand that people are going after them because they're looking, for, they want to lose weight. Exactly. They want help. And, and you know, it's it's so interesting because with the clients that I work with, and many of them, if not all of them, have either at one time tried some form of extreme dieting like that, whether it's keto or low carb, intermittent fasting. Um, you know, there's so many out there. And and one of the top things that they always tell me is that they had they got results, short term results. But once they kind of went off of it and went back to their normal life or what was a lot more I guess, fitting for their lifestyle, they gained all the way back. So it wasn't something that they could actually incorporate as a lifestyle. Right. It was a very temporary fix. And so then they're a lot more frustrated because now they've, many of them have gained even more weight than they had lost doing the diet. And so, you know, it's so interesting because when we, we go through the process of, you know, I'm coaching them and they start seeing the weight come off and they're eating more throughout the day and they're eating more foods that they thought were just taboo they can't believe it. They can't believe that it can be done that way with, you know, with the structure and the system that we teach. Right. Which, which that's what it comes down to. You yeah. know, it's, it's like the other night I was bored. You? I was at home. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was bored, you know, in California at this very moment in time, we don't have the le- the, the luxury to go to restaurants and sit down and be <laughs> right. around people. Mm-hmm. And I don't spend a lot of time with a lot of people. Um, and so if I don't have my daughters, then I'm usually working or mm-hmm. finding some show on TV <laughs> or, or researching. Like I, yeah. I'm fascinated with nutrition and health. And the other day I was on TED, um, a TED Talk. Oh, and okay. I was watching people who, they had some type of spill about no diet, anti-diet, how to lose weight without dieting. Okay. And it was interesting because they're sharing information based on what their life has put in front of them. Right. Okay. Because they don't know about diet free life. Okay. So. Right. Yeah. Right. And it made me think about how many times I've been in a room with other professionals, dietitians, nutritionists, uh, doctors, nurses, et cetera. Right. And when I walk into the room, they don't know anything about the diet free life method. Right. And they have all these preconceived ideas based on what their life has been. Right. What yeah. they've observed, what they've read, what they've learned. Mm hmm. And an hour later, once they see the method and how it works, almost always everybody in the room wants to do the pro. Everybody wants to do diet free life. Mm -hmm. And I can say that with, I mean, that's the the truth. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's the the truth. So it's not that I'm selling. I'm just, it's the truth. Right. So when I was watching these people on TED Talk explain, Mm -hmm. there were still a lot of things woven inside of their the information they shared Mm. that were based on their painful experience of dieting in the past. 
Like, give me an example. So there was never a solution oh. to how to live the way they said, if you listen to this talk, you're going to get it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? Oh, totally. I, I, and I could the, share something with you on after, after you make your point. No, no. I, I've, I've made my point. So, I mean, go ahead. I mean, share it because that's the part that no one knows until they know. Yes. And once you know, die of your life, mm -hmm. you see it, you experience it. Mm -hmm. You can't unsee it or unexperience <laughs> right, it. Right. You can't undo it. It's, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the only people that I've seen, uh, Mm -mm. basically like let's say when someone has done die for life and they gain all the way back because it happens yeah is not because of lack of knowledge it's really based on what their life is like and oftentimes their ego gets in the way yeah they start playing games with themselves yes and next thing you know they gain the way they back. try to manipulate things so anyway i made my point a little bit of this a little bit of that but no i like the point where you said there's no solution when they might give this information more like an anecdote of what worked for them but there's no step-by-step -step solution for how to replicate those results right right and so i see that all the time there's so many good articles out there like like just like you said i like to look up and google different topics and there's some great information out there but across the board what i find is that there's great information but the average person if they th there's no way to take that information and effectively um put it into play Right. It's just cool. It was great information, but how the hell do I actually make that work? Like there's no there's, there's no, no there's no structure in place. Right. Which we have a system. And yeah. even like one of the things that, that I've shared with the coaches who teach this system. Right. Is that guys, this is a system. Mm -hmm. You're never I mean the chances of you and any of our coaches to mm -hmm. meet someone or organization that has a system mm -hmm. that's already like vetted out and done and works, the likelihood of that happening is is not it's, it's not going to happen. Right. There are no systems mm -mm. that have freedom woven throughout it. Exactly. And so, anyway, the the call to action, you guys, if you're interested, you know, <laughs> we have coaches, we have an online program. Mm -hmm. You don't have to diet. We have something that can work for everybody. Yes. So. Reach out to us to learn about it. There's no reason why you need to go and, and spend time on keto and, or intermittent fasting mm -hmm. um, or paleo or whatever else. Right. You know, and, and I'll end on this note. <laughs> and that is when a person does die for your life, right, mm -hmm. you learn the structure and you get educated on how to eat regular, everyday all types of foods, no matter where you are. Yes. Lose the weight. Mm -hmm. And because you, you're you eating regular mm -hmm. and it's not your typical diet, mm -hmm. then you can continue to eat that way without concerns of gaining weight back. Yep. Absolutely. So I would have business people say, Robert, <laughs> I like what you're saying. It makes total sense. But the, you, there's one big problem you have. And I said, well, what's that? Yeah. They said, well, there's no continuity. And what they were meaning by that is that if you buy Nutrisystem, okay, at the end of the month you got to buy it again, and then at the end of that month you got to buy, buy it, it again. Yeah. If you do Weight Watchers, there's you can go in person, you can go online, mm -hmm. uh, and every month you buy it again, mm -hmm. and every month you buy it again, and it's for what you already have experienced because you're not. Uh, the dependent on self. You're not self-sufficient with it. You're codependent with it. Right. And once you stop that, then you go back to your old ways. Yes. You never learn. So the businessman said, Robert, it's a great program. It makes total sense, but there's no continuity. Oh. And I said, well, I hear what you're saying, but I want them to have it. Right. I don't want them to be dependent on me. Mm -hmm. It's education. Exactly. And if you have that, then yeah. you own it. You it, want people to be empowered. And there's ways to make money other ways. I mean, like if I wanted something mm -hmm. that was ongoing monthly, mm -hmm. you know, some of the things that we're looking at now is, you know, let's give them some unique seminars some some lectures, some right. additional information. So people will pay because they like how robust the resources are right. that we have available inside of our online membership. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, yeah I love it. Anyway. That's good stuff. No, no more, you guys. No more dieting. <laughs> Let's end it. Let's end it. Let's end it. There's no more no more for that stuff. Get the mm-hmm. real education. And um, <clears throat> again, I would love the opportunity to be uh, on a platform with all the people who have their beliefs. Um, and Because and, a lot of the things that these people are sharing, these experts, is good information. I'm not knocking it. Yeah. But, you know, like I was looking at this guy who pushes intermittent fasting and I was going... Okay, his client comes in on January 1st. Okay. <laughs> we have someone that does diet free life on January 1st. They both lose, let's say, 30 pounds in 30 days. Okay. One does intermittent fasting, and the other one eats the way we talk about eating. Yes. Three meals, they're snacking otherwise. Right. They're not starving. If they both lose 30 pounds, what would you, I mean, if, if they both are going to get you down 30 pounds, <laughs> right? would you prefer to be hangry all the time and not eating and you got to keep looking at the clock until 12 o'clock? <laughs> right. Or would you like to be able to eat? Yeah, I would absolutely be, you know, able to eat. Now, that's how we think. But this is what a lot of people do to get in their own way. Let's say I'm going to call the guy John. Okay. If, we, if I had shared that with John and he's thinking about intermittent fasting, yeah. he goes, no, I'm not hungry in the morning. Right, so, so he, I don't need to eat. Yeah. I'm good. He goes, your program, I mean, that's great, but I don't even want to eat in the morning. Okay. And he's going to come up with references to support the decision that he's making. Oh, I see. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because <laughs> nobody, and Dr. Phil <laughs> made this really popular, nobody wants to, well, not nobody, but a lot of people don't like the idea of admitting that they're not right. Right. I, was, I thought you were going to say something like that, like being wrong or. Yeah, they don't want to be wrong. Yeah. They want to be right. Yes. And so I'm going to come up with a whole bunch of beliefs and references <laughs> and resources yeah. to support the decision that I make. Right. And that would be the same for people who are doing keto or like you have fitness professionals that mm-hmm. are doing certain things, influencing mm-hmm. people. Right. This is the truth. And a lot of those people are never going to come to you, Barbara. Yeah. No matter what you say, no matter what Facebook lives you Mm -hmm. do, no matter how you explain it, because they would have to admit that what they've been pushing Mm -hmm. was not ideal. Right. That's so they would rather just stay away from you. Exactly. Just, yeah, I'm not going to go there. So. Yeah. And it's not that they're hating. Mm -mm. It's just that. You know, like if, if things change with nutrition, you know, I used to always share this with dietitians when I would do lectures. I would say, <clears throat> are you going to call every patient and let them know that what you've been telling them is wrong? Yeah, right. I would. Well, I mean, I think most people would not, though. Right. And I have. I have. Mm-hmm. Even after having kids, I, you know, would have certain clients that mm-hmm. I apologize to. Oh. I apologize because I used for, to say, hey, look, just get up early in the morning, knock out that workout. Hey, look, if you want it, you can make it happen. <laughs> and I wasn't thinking about the things that I've learned as a new as a father that I want to be there when they wake up. I want to be there because I can to feed them breakfast and to, right. and to laugh and to, to walk them to school. Like, I want to do that. So, therefore, there is no time that I could get up early enough to be able to get that workout so for every right. parent that i said otherwise uh-huh. i was calling them all going hey i apologize they're like about what is now i go i'm a dad now yeah and i get some of the challenges that i thought i got right but through my own experience i know what it, i get it now right and you know that's the whole part about meeting people where they are and having that empathy you know because me too coming from a you know bodybuilding background and just going hardcore with my regimen and my schedule um, it's a lot different when you're more in lifestyle mode. It's totally different. And someone who is is able to go at it that hard and that regimented, that's great. But it doesn't work for everybody. But there's still the way that even if your schedule doesn't permit that, there's still a way to get to the goals that you want. You just have to be able to mold it to what actually works and makes sense for you. Right. And I think that's what's so, so um, valuable about what we teach is that we can do that. And I do that. I literally have, you know, people who are, you know, athletic body fat range, 
you know, to lifestyle. They're trying to drop 20, 30 pounds. I mean, across the board, and I get them, they're all succeeding. And that's what's just so awesome about it. Just, I don't know, I get excited about well, it. Well, when it's, when it's yeah. evidence-based and clinically proven, yeah. that can be the case. So, <laughs> all right, so I want to segue, Barbara. <laughs> yeah. And, um, Take you a know, sip of water. a lot of people died in 2020 mm-hmm. from a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Uh, COVID, <laughs> from a distance... When I emailed you or text you and yeah. I said, hey, do some research and let's talk about the number one killer because something inside me was saying COVID may be the new number one killer mm-hmm. based on what I'm hearing yeah. and reading. And then I looked up a little bit and I saw a couple people actually making that statement. Mm-hmm. But just because I see that doesn't mean I believe it. Right. Um, and I was like, let's talk about the number one killer. Like, yeah. It's, so, well, COVID was up there. All right, so so what is the number one killer? If, well, the you, number, if you want to start there, yeah, we'll start with we'll start there. So the number one killer still is heart disease. It is, and um, and what was really interesting though when they talk about COVID now they you can break it down in different age groups, but still very comfortably they're still looking at the data from you know 2020, but very comfortably they're saying COVID is uh, number three okay. of the leading cause of death. Behind cancer, so it goes from. And when you say cancer, it's not one specific. It's all. It's like the a cancers. group, yeah, right. a group of cancers. So it's heart disease is number one still, um, cancer, and then COVID is um, number three. Okay. So that's. So arguably, I mean, COVID really, you could say that it's number two, right? Because if I break up all the cancers, I mean, yeah, prostate you could. cancer, breast mm-hmm. cancer, you know what I mean, colon right. cancer, yeah. Uh-huh. And then even if you look at different age groups as well, how the, the numbers can slightly shift as far as the, you know, where COVID might land. But overall in the U.S., COVID's number three. And just the way the numbers, even if you're looking at still the, the as they're processing the numbers, it's still there's a comfortable distance between like the second number two and then number four. It fits nicely in number three right there. So, okay. But it's significant. All right. So, but let's talk about heart disease because yeah. everyone's talking about COVID. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. like if 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 we like like it's interesting, right? Because you have COVID's everywhere, but yet yeah. it's number three and mm-hmm. how people are dying and heart disease is number one. number one. Could you imagine if every day, all day on TV, they had the numbers based on people who Johnny just died of a yeah. heart attack, 18 people in uh, Wyoming. They must be eating a lot of steaks over there. Exactly. <laughs> it's like we've become numb to it. And you're right. It's number one. It's the number one killer. Now, when you like when you say heart disease, because mm-hmm. my mom lives with heart disease. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people, as you mature in life, eventually you have. You know, you're, you can live with heart disease. Right. Um, but are the people dying primarily of heart as a result of a heart attack? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure, but it just they just list heart disease as the the number one number one killer. So I'm sure it's all wrapped up in there. Well, you know, it's it's interesting when you look at like obesity mm-hmm. and heart disease. Mm-hmm. Both of those have been on an incline for many years. Yeah. And if you go back in 1980 when we came out with at the time, it was the most fulfilling, if you will, um, guidelines for how to eat. Like, okay. You know, like heart healthy. Pre, like uh, pyramid, my plate. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Right. So the guideline, the dietary guidelines, 1980. Okay. And since 1980, every five years, they update them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, since 1980, when they made it very clear that the leading cause for heart disease mm-hmm. is how much fat you're consuming. Yeah. All we've seen is obesity and heart disease constantly increase since 1980. Is that a coincidence? <laughs> yeah. Because now a lot of the data is saying that the way we eat carbohydrates, whether you call it sugar, the starches, et cetera, but the processed foods, right? that's playing a bigger role in the increase Oh. of heart disease got it right because mm-hmm. you eat carbs there's a process those carbs become triglycerides yes you get stored as fat and so then mostly, yeah like the like the villain the nutrient villain has changed like went from fat then to the carbs right and then yeah. you have it's almost like a political debate yeah because you have the people who believe fat is a problem which is our parents yeah 
right? Because when you sat yeah. down with your mom and dad, and did they make comments about fat? Because they grew up during a time when yeah. fat was the demon. Yeah, pretty much. Because, I mean, yeah, my mom being Italian, my dad being Filipino, I mean, she's still eating her pasta and they're still having their rice. <laughs> it's and, more and about eating, the fat. And yeah. eating some pork and all that, right? Yeah. So, yeah, they love all that. But, yeah, I would say, yeah, I would agree with that. They're probably more focused on fat okay, and, and then, trying to eliminate fat. And then with your 20 and 30 year old Ugh. clients, it's carbs. primarily carbs. They're like carb. They're scared of carbs. Like, yeah, almost paranoid. Wow, you know, I have a lady yeah. that I'm coaching right now mm-hmm. that um, she primarily ate protein and salads for quite a few years. Mm-hmm. And the weight constantly was creeping up and up and up. And, you know, you would get her, get her thyroid checked. Uh-huh. She would go and what it, what else is it? Is my, uh, do I have an imbalance with my hormones? Mm-hmm. And now she's doing diet for life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, during the first week, it was great because she would send me photos of her meals. Uh-huh. And she sent me this one. <laughs> uh, well, one, in her first seven days, she had one salad. Whereas before that, she was eating two to three salads a day. Okay. So she was eating pasta. Oh. And she said they were at the kitchen table eating. And she has two daughters and the husband and everybody's talking. Yeah. And... Uh, they all realized it got quiet. She was eating and she said she looked up and everybody was staring at her. <laughs> and she goes, what's going on? And oh they my go, God. And the two daughters were like, mom, you're not eating the salad. Wow. And then the dad goes, is that pasta? <laughs> it was like he couldn't believe it. And her weight was down the first seven days. Wow. And she avoided those types of foods, pasta, cereal, um, for many years. And oh her gosh. weight was creeping up. Huh. And now she went from the low carb keto mindset mm-hmm. to eating carbs and eating regular fun and delicious foods. Right. And the weight's coming off. And but was she scared when you first told her that this is what you can have? Was she very apprehensive about it? She was. Yeah. Um, however, she's an uh, educator. Mm-hmm. And whenever I work with educators, mm-hmm. people from a academic academia space then they're open to learning. Okay. Right? So, and one of the things that I do, Barbara, when I'm coaching people, yeah, and maybe you do this, maybe you don't, and this is for some of our coaches, yeah, is that <clears throat> I know that people come to the table mm-hmm. with certain beliefs in place. Mm-hmm. Right? Like yes. confirmation bias. Absolutely. And so, if you want someone to quickly change the way they look at things, Mm -hmm. You must create doubt in their beliefs. So I share information like with her, with the posture. Actually, I shared the glycemic index. Yes. I showed her the white potato. That's a good one. Then I showed her the potato chips, (laughs) showed her the science, told her where it was referenced from, and that got her attention. Yeah. That's a great one. And so I started there, and now she had room to bring in new beliefs. Mm -hmm. And then I said, only through the experiential Meaning, in the next seven days, you and I will know if this works or not. Yeah. Because we're going to weigh on day seven, and then we'll weigh again on day 21. Right. I said, but this is your first week. Mm -hmm. And I said, don't step on the scale. (laughs) Just create your fat burning meals. Yes. You're texting me your meals. I can see them and give feedback. Yeah. So you have clarity. There's no guessing. Yes. If you have a little bit less than you could be eating, I'll make a comment. Mm-hmm. If I think that you are eating too much in that meal, yeah. I'll say, hey, it looks like you had a little bit too much. And after 21 meals, that's good practice. It is. We're going to step on the scale, do your body composition, and we're going to know if this is working. Yeah. And seven days came. And what was she? She was down in nice. weight. Um, I'm not going to mention how many pounds she was down. <laughs> Because she may watch this uh-huh. and she'll p- figure out that I'm talking about her. She's like, yes. But she was, she's down. That's great. And I'm very excited about it because when you get people who are educators mm-hmm. and they get it, mm-hmm. then those people talk to other educators. Oh, for sure. And then knowledge starts to get fueled. And it's no more like I'm just going to do this diet or that diet and guess is based on education. Yes. But accurate education. Yeah, for sure. 
so. real deal stuff. Now I got to ask you because I hear this quite a bit. But on top of her weight loss, how was her energy that first week? Oh, great! Right? I like mean, there's sometimes one. there's a little dip. Mm-hmm. Um, my concern with her, and this is another coaching tip. Yeah, she was primarily going with protein and and slow carbs, or like very little carbs, like so protein and like kind of more of a low carb. Okay. Okay. So, so when a person's doing like more of a low carb and they become a diet free life client, mm-hmm. the majority of the time in that first week, their weight is going to stay the same or they're going to gain a couple pounds. Okay. And that's because they are malnourished when it comes to carbs. Yeah. And so I shared with her that after the fact, and I said, Hey, I'm really excited about where you are because your weight's down. Your body fat percentage is down. Right. This is great. And I said, to be honest and open with you, um, I expect that your weight to be the same or to go up b- based on what you told me you had been eating. From, yeah, her previous right. leading up to. Okay. So then she says, so why would that be? I said, well, I explained that you're probably malnourished with carbs. Mm-hmm. And when you eat carbs, you do have carbs that get stored in your liver mm-hmm. and they get stored in your muscles. Mm-hmm. And... For every gram of carb that's stored in your muscles, you have about three grams attached to it in water. Water, yes. So if you're eating carbs that you weren't eating and now Mm -hmm. you're full, your muscles are full, your liver for the most part is full, that means you're also bringing bringing in more water. Right, you're holding on to some more water. And she was like, that was good. Yeah. And so for her, learning, applying, Mm -hmm. right, it kind of goes with the whole Bloom's autonomy. Right. It's like she's at that place now where she's ready to take it to a whole nother level. Right. So she's like synthesizing now and really yes. getting to understand it and, and then apply it for herself. And that is so empowering. And, you, mean, and you're excited when you're learning. Well, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Especially when like when we were talking about the labels earlier. Yeah. So you got people that can take that little bit of information mm-hmm. that we shared. Mm-hmm. They'll go grocery shopping this week. Mm-hmm. They'll go in and they'll go, they're not fooling me this time. Right. And they now have control. Yeah. So they got to take out their calculator and do their little. <laughs> I mean, it's, they'll see when it goes lean or go extra lean, right? Yeah. So it's just two basic things, right? You you know that there's nine calories in a gram of fat. Mm-hmm. You you pay attention to like the serving, which we, we'll do like a, a whole session. Yeah, we can do like a whole lesson on, on labels, that. Right. Yeah. We can talk about carbs. Like why is it that it says total carbohydrates, total fat, mm-hmm. but it doesn't say total protein. Right. It just says protein. Yeah. And we can help people understand why the label is set up like that. Yeah. And then you, when people get knowledgeable of this, the thing that I enjoy the most is that they realize added sugar is not the problem. Mm-hmm. It's that's not the problem. The the, the bigger problem is the ingredients uh, that make up whatever the product is. Yeah. And how much of it that you consume at one time. Exactly. Yeah. And that's actually one of the things I think that most people when they look at labels are so fixated on the carbs for one or the added sugars and just so freaked out about any of that. Even if it's say literally if it's just fruit, they just freak out. When well think of all the sugar. bodybuilders that don't eat fruit. Right. I mean, fruit is like a no no for yeah, bodybuilders. About, right. Did I eat a lot of fruit even bodybuilding? Not well you really. get to a place where you're eating kind of solids. Like bananas, if anything. I mean I did have bananas. But not like I eat fruit now. <laughs> right, so you eat a lot of fruit now. Yeah, I, yeah, I vary it for sure. I mean fruits are a friend. Yeah. Okay, but going back to heart disease. Okay, so back for to that. you, <clears throat> based on you, when you looked at heart disease and kind of like was looking at the stats and what's going on, mm-hmm. and we know that the majority of people who die in the world are dying because of heart disease. Yeah. Uh, what are some tips that you would recommend for people when it comes to what they can do right. to reduce the likelihood? of experiencing heart disease oh, or dying of a heart attack. Yeah, there's, um, you know, one of the top things that we come across all the time is their nutrition, right? Their diet, you know, eating um, balanced, well-portioned. They, you know, when you read the articles, it's they, they kind of put it out there. This is where we, we talk about how there's great information out there, but not so much of a solution. They talk about eating, you know, fruits and vegetables, watching your intake of fat, Um, another thing would be exercise, you know, getting your exercise in, being active, um, smoking or not smoking, I should say, um, you know, how do you deal with stress? So a lot of lifestyle factors too all come into play, which is all good information and high blood pressure. And high blood pressure. Yes. That's a precursor in in a big way. Yeah. You know, all that, um, 
And what I see across the board, even though that's, when you look at the list of here, here are the things that you can do to help prevent you know, heart disease, prevent heart attack. And of course, I don't mean to digress, but obviously your, your family history comes in, is, is comes into play. Well, don't you always well. wonder, like, when they say family history, mm-hmm. like, what are they really saying? Right? Because I've always battled that. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that yeah. is <clears throat> I'll hear, like, the doctor say, well, you know, your mom has diabetes, so family history, there's a good chance you're going to get diabetes. Yeah. And I would go, no, no. The way my mom eats and the way I eat different are I didn't inherit that. Right. My mom and I'm not saying this about my mom, but my mom doesn't exercise. Well, I exercise. Yes. So I am not living the life that my parents lived. Mm -hmm. My life is different. So what does family history got to do with anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you know what I mean? Like, I mean, just think about there's so much more that you can control. As far as, you know, like how you live your life, how you exercise, how you eat. There's, those are the controllables for sure. And what I found was interesting, we kind of touched on this before, about how there's great information out there. So you read these articles, you know, they list, you know, heart disease being, you know, the number one killer in the United States. Um, here are some things that you can do to help prevent. Or even if, let's say, you are, you know, you are um, struggling with heart disease right now and you're trying to improve your health it still goes back to your nutrition getting exercise and all those things um but at the same time with this listing of information there's really no concrete way if someone really really wanted to invoke that change in their life and they didn't know about what we do or you know how they can learn how to eat they read this article and it says eat more fruits and vegetables you know you know limit your fat um for the mm. average person, they're like, they still don't know what that means. No, because it means absolutely it nothing. It means nothing. No. And, you know, I even have, so I have a client who, you know, um, has survived a heart attack. And I was actually asking him, so like after that happened, what kind of help did you get? You know, as far as, because that's so scary to go through that. And it's such a vulnerable place, right? You're thinking, oh my God, I almost, I could have died. You know, I really want to do what it takes to... To, to make my life better, to be the the most the the most the most healthful as possible at this point, and I asked, so what kind of resources or help did you get? And there really wasn't much. Well, it's I'm really sure, like sad. oftentimes they'll uh, recommend they go meet with a dietitian or a yes. nutritionist. Yeah. But again, there's a breakdown there because most mm-hmm. dietitians and nutritionists mm-hmm. are going to promote and encourage you to eat close to the way they eat right or mm-hmm. the way the book says they supposed to tell you to eat yeah like i'm vegetarian for example i'm a ve- i'm not but if, if let's say if that person was a vegetarian they say oh you need to go vegetarian yeah, or something you like need that. more plant-based or if they're against tofu mm-hmm. because of their ignorance then mm-hmm. they would say well you know you shouldn't be doing tofu um mm-hmm. and they start talking about the isoflavins and the relationship mm-hmm. between tofu and um uh, estrogen levels mm-hmm. uh which is not true the mm-hmm. association that people are preaching out there mm-hmm. then a person would okay well i'm gonna stay away from estrogen and never yeah. guess like never check or vet them mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. when we work with the clients like oh yeah when you get a chance google what i'm saying to you yeah go, go and yeah because this is new information don't take my word for it you know check it out mm-hmm. right so. right <laughs> and only that will yeah and to kind of you know uh add on to that is I always like to share the fact that you know evidence-based clinically proven I like to show all the work that you know who we've done work with you know there's something to be proud about as far as the methodology that we teach you know um but anyway so with respect to you know what can be done to help prevent or you know help you know help you get healthier um those are the top two things I I was kind of looking at a variety of different articles just to see if there's something different that came out you know but of course nutrition was top You know, exercise was right up there. Um, One of the articles or one of the things I found said that, um, you know, getting your annual physical as well, just being aware of the fact that, you know, what your blood, you know, your blood work says, because a lot of times people don't realize maybe their cholesterol levels are high. They don't even know that um, until they go in and get their regular checkup. So they said just being sure, getting your regular checkup just to monitor where you're at um, so that if you do need to make some changes, you can be, you know, a little bit more proactive as opposed to I've heard a lot of people going in to get their 
let's say their blood work done and maybe some years have passed, they go in and they're like, oh my God, I didn't, had no idea. My cholesterol levels were this high or whatever it may be, you know, and, and, and freak I, out. And, and I would argue that most people have no idea what those numbers mean anyway. Yeah, that's you know, true. You go in and they say, well, you're 200 over uh, 110. I was like, what? And they go, so what's that mean? Well, you know, you, you know, start to exercise, maybe drop about five or 10 pounds. <laughs> right. And they leave and that's about it. Yeah. And after three days, they ain't even thinking about that. Mm-mm. Because now when you're taking, when you're, when you have medications, then every day you take your medications, if you're compliant and yeah. you take your medication, which most, especially men don't, oh. then every time that's a reminder. And it, oh. and it makes me think about this. And, and, and I'm going to give someone a shout out. And I want you to think about someone as I share Kay. this information and give a shout out t- to give someone a shout out. Okay. So that'll give us a chance to always kind of share information about some of our clients. Okay. Because it may resonate with someone who's watching, right? All right. So I did a post yesterday on Facebook. Okay. And I took metformin and I kind of exited out mm-hmm. and talked about one of my new clients who I started working with. Mm-hmm. And I shared this with you on the phone who was taking metformin, got some other medications they're taking, mm-hmm. and they saw me do a live interview with one of our coaches. Okay. And they know the coach, but for some reason they didn't connect the dots with the coach that the other coach who knows Dying Free Life could have done what I did for them. <laughs> so they reached out to me, mm-hmm. and I said, I will help you out. So yeah. I made them a client, and I said, what are some of your biggest goals? She goes, well, I, w- I want to get this weight off. But I hate these these pills. And you were talking about diabetes and metformin. And I just want to get off of this metformin. Mm. Well, it's been less than three months. And Jane, that's her name. Jane is uh, in uh, Virginia. And Jane, I just want to give you a big shout out. I'm very proud of you. Um, she is off metformin. And every morning, she, you know, I have her check her blood glucose levels. Mm-hmm. And she's averaging 90, 91, 92, 90. Nice. No metformin. Wow. Everything's coming together. She's dropping inches. The weight's starting to come down. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple other medications we're going to get off. Mm-hmm. And she's focused on that. And so we're celebrating not because of a drastic weight drop, but we're celebrating because she wanted to get off metformin. Mm-hmm. And usually you lose weight and then that's associated with getting off metformin. She got off metformin because she's eating in a way that her blood sugar levels are not out of control. They're not spiking too high, not spiking too low. And she's off. And how long did you say that it took her? It's a little less than three months. That's great. And her doctor doesn't know she's off. Not yet. Not yet. And so I said, keep track of your 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 numbers in the morning. Mm -hmm. Let's keep track of everything else. And when you go in and check, they're going to also check her hemoglobin A1C. Mm-hmm. We're going to see that that's better. And you can then tell your doctor, yeah, I haven't been on this in two months, <clears throat> three months, four months. They're going to be like, whoa. And here's my blood sugar. There's no argue, they, they're not going to argue it. Right. You know what I mean? So she took control of her health. And fortunately, she met, I consider us to be truth sharers. Mm-hmm. So we're sharing truth. And giving her the structure to be successful. Yeah. And she's successful. So That's great. So congratulations, Jane. Nice. Proud of you. Oh, well, congratulations, Jane. That's for sure. Yes. Um, God, my shout out. Oh, this is a hard one because I have, I mean, I love all my clients and they've been doing so well. But I'm going to share this story because of her impact. It's, it's, a, it's an inspiration to her family, generations. So this particular client I've been working with, she started on the Icora program with me. Um, she's type one diabetic. She uh, used to be, you know, hardcore into, you know, or relatively hardcore into keto. Um, and she had been struggling with her weight for, I guess, I mean, a year at least, and was just getting so frustrated with it. Um, she saw a post. We did it. We had done an interview. We were talking about the Icora program. Um, she reached out. And in fact, actually, I know her daughter. Okay, so I know her daughter um, as an acquaintance. And um, and so anyway, I got on the phone. Her name is Patty. And uh, we talked. We started her on the i program. And I started working with her. Now we've, we're going through now our third cycle. Um, she's dropped weight. She hasn't dropped weight in I don't know how long. But she, her body fat percentage is coming down. 
the thing that I want to give her a shout out for is that she's been so excited about the fact that she knows how to eat and she's now 70. She said, finally at the age of 70, I feel like I can actually understand and feel freedom with food. Like I know what to eat, what will work for me. And I don't feel like I'm constantly guessing and stressed out about my food. And the reason why I'm sharing this story about her is that so her daughter and now her granddaughter have seen this amazing change in their grandmother and how well she's doing, how empowered she is with food that I'm now working with them. And nice. Yeah. And so and their reasoning is they've the, the daughter. So she's my, like around my age. Um, she was, she's done diets. She's struggled with her weight cycling and she's getting frustrated. And now her daughter. So now the, the granddaughter of my client, my initial client. She sees this struggle that her mom and her grandmother have had for years and she's trying, she wants to prevent going down that same path. She's like, no, I just want to understand just how to eat and eat in a healthful way and not feel like I'm constantly guessing or or, is this food bad or is this food good and, and, and feeling like so judged by what she eats. And so they all have their own different rationale or reasoning for why they're you know why we're working together but overall it started with you know with patty she inspired didn't realize it that she was inspiring you know her daughter and her granddaughter and um how much i don't know how much power she had in just making the decision to do something good for her and how that impacted you know generations nice so i mean I'm so proud of her. Well, make it a family affair. And so yeah. congratulations, Patty. Yes. We're all proud of you. Yes. And uh, that brings us to a close there, Barb. Oh, damn. That's so a- we talked about a lot of things. I know. Are you sure we have we don't have anything else to talk about? Oh, there's a thousand things we can <laughs> talk about. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's a thousand things. Uh-huh. But, you know, the information, uh, again, I just want to remind people mm-hmm. that it helps us help people. Mm-hmm. When you share our content, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, mm-hmm. um, comment, ask questions. We're there to help out. Mm-hmm. Um, invite on YouTube, hit the bell so that you know when we post new videos. That's always helpful because finally now I'm, I'm in a place personally where I want to really do things like this mm-hmm. to get the word out yeah, and cut through all the confusion and give people clarity mm-hmm. so that they can make decisions that are going to really serve them for the long term. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and before we do go, I mm. want to give a shout out to one of our Diet Free Life coaches, mm-hmm. uh, Eric Granger. Oh, yeah. And you've talked to Eric. I have. So did you see his post about his uh, hemoglobin A1C? Yes. And awesome. so he's on metformin and I can see him getting off of metformin. Yeah. So that's an example of a coach who took control of his health. His weight's down, like mm-hmm. all these great things are going well for him mm-hmm. uh and he and his wife they're both in the space of wellness and helping and yeah i think she's a, a modair she is rep yeah and so you know where he can help people with the nutrition and mm-hmm. the clarity uh she's right there to help them supplement in a way that's going to help yeah. them maximize yes i get it so congrats uh eric yes uh, proud of you man i know congratulations so now he's got to get eric coaching more i know so if somebody wants to be coached <laughs> by eric <laughs> He's ready. He is ready. We went over how to do the consultation. <laughs> well, you know, when, you, when you're when you a new coach, it's like you, you want to get the ball rolling, but it's like you, you have a job, you got a family, you're trying to like bring in this new entrepreneurship. Yes. And then you want to get the confidence so that you can, you can, you know, do it and you want to do it right because well, yeah. look, you're, if this is a person, right? When I am working with a person, I got to handle with care. For sure. So I don't want to just be guessing. Mm-hmm. And that's why some coaches, I respect and appreciate, you know, the fact that they are wanting to make sure they're in a good position. Yeah. But what they tend to forget is that they have the heart of a teacher anyway. Mm -hmm. There is a Mother Teresa in all of them. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to screw up and that at least I'm there to help them when they need help. Right. Right. So when you had your first clients. Yeah. If you were like, okay, so before. Hey, uh, Robert, real quick, got a question. (laughs) Then you just call and then we talk about it. And then sometimes, oftentimes, I become better because of what you're sharing with me, mm-hmm. right? So it's a win-win because your success is my success mm-hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. And the goal is to help people. Yeah. So. 
I get it. All right, well, Barbara, that's Barbara Chris, everybody. Hey. BK, BK Fat Loss. What's up, Ferg? And uh, <laughs> good show. And and like we always say, and we've been playing around with this, is that we do want people to get healthy. Yes. And we do want people to be healthy mm-hmm. so they can what, Barbara? Stay healthy. You got it. Boom. So until the next one, we're out of here. <laughs>